holiday. And so when we look in the scriptures, Thanksgiving is not what America calls Thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. Um, we can give thanks, and we do give thanks in scripture. There's, there's all kinds of, of, of references made in scripture um, for, for giving thanks. But the Hebrew word for thanksgiving means praise. Amen? Yeah. And so what we need to do more of as a church, not just Proverbs, but as a church globally, is be more praise-filled. Amen? Amen? Because there's many things that God is doing in our lives. God is doing great things and he's doing small things. Amen. He's doing things that we notice and he's doing also those things that we don't notice. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be on the lookout for what God is doing. And I'll say more about that later. We're now in the season of giving. The season of thankfulness, gratefulness. This is a season called the season of life. And before too much longer, you're going to go around in different neighborhoods and people are going to have their Christmas lights on. I was in a block the other night and saw a house full of Christmas lights. Pretty lights. I thought about Matthew 5, 13 through 16, where Jesus says, You are salt and light. You're the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and to be trampled underfoot. So we need to be salt. We need to be light. Verse 14 says, you are light, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Salt and light have to have a purpose. They have to be useful in order to be effective. Salt that is no longer salty, light that is hidden, is no longer effective. You are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. You are the salt of the world, are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Now let's take a look at um, the scripture text that I asked you to look at earlier. 1 Thessalonians 2, 13 through 16. <coughs> but we are always to give to thank God for you, brothers loved by the Lord, because from the beginning God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this throughout gospel, this through our gospel, that you might share the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and the God our Father who loved us and by his grace and gave us eternal encouragement and good hope encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. So I'm talking to you about <clears throat> being salt and light. And then I just read something to you about, <clears throat> about um, 
the, the, the um, church in Thessalonica. Paul um, started that church, and it was um, Gentile believers. It was, a, it was a relatively young church. It was a church that, um, that um, hadn't been together very long. And so one of the things that we know about that church when, this, when, they, when um, First Thessalonians was written is that they were going through persecution. They were being talked about and laughed at and, and they were being, um, um, they, were, they were suffering for what they believed. When we, when we become believers, sometimes we have to suffer for what we believe. But how many of y'all know in this country, we don't have to suffer anywhere near as much as people in other countries that have named the name of Christ. We're not suffering like they are. We're not going through many of the hardships that they're going through. But I think they're coming. I think they're coming. We need to prepare ourselves for that. Amen. But I also think that as we're in the church, there are people in the church with us that sometimes can persecute. Amen? You're right. I, I'm thinking about the holidays and how we're getting ready to have time where we're going to be sitting at the table with some people that maybe we don't always sit at the table with or get along with. Sometimes holidays are, are more stressful because the people that are coming are the people that maybe are, 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 um, are hard to get along with. Amen. So we have to sit across the table and we have to have a good time anyway. Right? So why am I talking to you about being salt and light? Why am I talking to you about a church in Thessalonica that had people that were persecuted? Well, here's the reason. I'm talking to you about that because if God is asking you to be salt and light and to remember that you're salt and light, and he's asking you to, to name the name of Christ and to go forth and to be his people, then that also extends to those people that we can't get along with. Pretty Amen. Sure. Family and friends and, and others that right. maybe right. aren't so lovable that sometimes. Sad. That was sad. And so when we, when, we, when we get in those situations, we, we need to remember who we are and what we are. I think when the church in Thessalonica was, was first going through what it was going through, it was very evident that they didn't remember who they were because they suffered and they needed Paul and they needed Timothy and they needed Silas and they needed these other individuals that were, that were their leaders and that were close to them to come around them in those early, in those early days of their development and give them encouragement. Give them words of, of, of uh, comfort. Give them words that would let them that, that, that let them know that they, that what they were doing mattered. And so if they were going through that and they needed that kind of that kind of support and that kind of help, don't we sometimes need that? Amen. If people are talking about us, don't we need somebody to come around us and tell us we're okay? Even though people are telling us we're not. Sometimes when people are trying to hurt us, we need somebody to, yeah. to let us know you're still, you're still okay. They're, they're talking about you, but you're still okay. You still have some good in you. You still matter. That makes a difference. So I'm talking to you about being salt and light for, for a purpose. If we give up and we uh, forget who we are and what we are, then we've lost our saltiness. Yes. We've lost our light. And if we lose our saltiness and we lose our light, we're no longer going to be effective. So that means when I go around other people with no saltiness in, no saltiness in me, and I don't have a light that's shining out of me, People aren't going to see much. They're not going to hear much. They're not going to know much about the God I serve. Because I've lost it. 
And so what, why am I telling you that today? Because today, we're in a place where things are gonna, things are gonna get more stressful. The holidays always create more stress for people. The holidays always do that. There's things to buy, there's places to go, there's, there's this and there's that and there's the other thing. And so we have, a, we have a time today to sit and reflect and talk about how God has blessed us, how God has brought us um, to this point, how he's been good to us all year long, how he's blessed us, how he's provided for us. We look at the table and we say, God, thank you for all of these good things. Thank you that I have a bed to sleep in. Thank you that I have clothes to wear. And then we go into Christmas, and then by the time we get to the end of that, that season, or get to the end, or get to the end of Christmas, we're burnt out. Because we've forgotten that we're salt and light. Because we've forgotten whose we are and what we are. You dare not forget who you are. And what you are. Yes. If you want to be effective, you need to hold on to that. If you want to be effective, you dare not forget that. Mm -hmm. The children, the, the, um, the people in the church in Thessalonica, they need a reminder that God allows our suffering to come around and, re and, 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 and for us to, to, to go through suffering so that he can come around us and reward us in the end. Amen. God sees everything and he knows everything and he's working those things out from our tests so that we can have a testimony. Amen. Do you hear that? Yes. God provides us to go through tests so that we can develop a testimony. How many of y'all are in the test right now? Amen. You need to, you need to um, write a note to self. I've got a testimony that I'm expecting to come out of this test. Yes. God is writing a testimony from the test that you're going through right now. Testimonies grow from tests and trials. You and I will not mature spiritually without a test and a trial. Mm -hmm. The church won't grow and mature without a test or a trial. The church won't grow. Proverbs won't grow. You won't grow without a test and a trial. Amen. The church is made up of individuals as well as a group. Amen? Amen. And so it's important for us to remember that too because God is, is taking, um, taking us as individuals through things to try us and to develop in us character, yes. to, to develop in us good things so that we can be a support and a help and a benefit to the people that we're a part of in our church families. Amen. In our real families. In our community. Yes. In here and out there. That's right. God is continually developing in us some things so that we can have something to give to those that need it. Yes, sir. So you're being tested and tried for a purpose. You're going through some things for a reason. And you might be asking yourself, well, God, why? Well, God, why this much? Well, God, why so often? Well, obviously, <laughs> he's got some other things in mind. But we don't always get to know what those things are right away. Yeah. We don't always get to know how he's going to do what he's going to do and when he's going to do it. But it's enough. You have to tell yourself this. It's enough that we know he's doing it. Yes. Amen. He's doing something, and guess what? You get to be part of it. Thank you. He's doing something, and you get to be part of it. So we need to hold on and keep on. Say that with me. Hold on and keep on. Hold on and keep on. Hold on and keep on. Neither a church or a believer that is effective has been through um, a church or a believer that is effective has been through some things. They have a testimony and they can praise God 
for bringing them through. So, so when you hear somebody giving a testimony that's been through some things, they know that they that they've only made it through because God brought them through. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's it, there's no way we can get through things on our own. There's no way we can grit our teeth and gut those things out without God helping us. Amen. Amen. And so I have to I have to give Him credit for for bringing me through. I have to give Him credit for helping me get to the other side of my situation. And I have to also be careful that I stand in in of situations like this or in meetings like this and give him his due because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have made it. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have anything to show for what I went through. Amen. And so I need to hold on and keep on believing that so that I can give that away to somebody else because somebody else is going to come to you that needs to hear that and you need to be able to tell them that. So we're, 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 we're in this season, we're in this time, we're, we're talking about Thanksgiving, and it's not just because that's what we do, it's because God is up to something. It's because God is, is reminding us that we are salt and light, and we dare not forget who we are and who we belong to. Amen. Because we're salt and light, because we belong to him, we have, we have merit. You matter. Even though people might try to make you feel like you don't matter, even though people might try to step on you, even though people might try to hold you back, even though people might try to discount you, you still matter to God. Yes. And because you matter to God, that's all that matters. Amen. Amen. So today, I want you to make a note in your mind that you're not going to let anybody or anything tear you down. Yes. yes. You're not going to let anybody or anything yes. make you think of yourself as less than. You're not going to let anybody or anything cause you to be discouraged, cause you to forget where you came from. Now, before I close, I want to share two quick stories with you. And then I have three things that I want to um, pass on to you. Um, that I want us to focus on in the coming new year. There was a young lady that was um, named Naomi who um, was going through some trials and some circumstances that were really heavy things. And um, emotionally she was, was really burdened down and, and struggling. So much so that one day she found herself down by the river, down by the Mississippi River. And she had two twins. And she made up in her mind while she was standing on the edge of the river that she couldn't handle life anymore. She couldn't handle the struggle she was going through anymore. And she took both of those twin babies and she tossed them in the river. One of them drowned. One of them was saved by an individual that was down on the, what saw her on the bridge that she was standing on by the edge of the river and went to the place where the babies went in and, and saved one of them. When that baby was returned, the story hit the news. And um, people saw her, and people made you know people made their own judgments about what kind of mother she was, and what kind of what what it, what how how bad she was. She was a villain, pretty much. After that story came out, but as time went on, they came back and revisited the story. There used to be a guy that, that reported the news and said, not for the rest of the story. So there's another part of the story. And so when, when you get to, to the story now, you find out that this lady was having some, some um, she had some mental illness problems. 
And since then, she's been in treatment. She's um, come out on the other side of that. She's doing much better. Her life is totally different than it was before. And um, a lot of the things that people thought about her weren't necessarily true. The things that were the things that drove her to do what she did wasn't because she was bad. It was because she was sick. Yeah. And so we have to um, we have to we have to um, see that and hear that and recognize that we have to be salt and light to a world that is hurting. There's people out in the streets where we live that are hurting. And if we forget that we're salt and light, we can't ever have a chance to come alongside of those people. Because if I've forgotten who I am, I can't tell you who you are. Amen? If I've forgotten where I came from, I can't tell you where you're going. It's like the blind leading the blind, amen? Mm -hmm. So it's important for us not to do that. It's important for us to hold on and... Let's try it again. It's important for us to hold on and keep on. We need to hold on and keep on because there's people out there looking for us to do that. They're looking for that. And we have to have something to give them. Yes. We need that. We need to give them something. There's another story that I'll share with you about a guy named Zach. He's a football player. He's a teenager. He didn't know how sick he was. Went to practice. Came back home. And in the course of a few hours after that, he had um, he had a um, stroke and collapsed. The friend of his was with him. She called 911, and they came and, and uh, took him to the hospital. If they hadn't acted within the few hours that they did act, as fast as they acted, he would have died. So they got him to the hospital, they got him checked out, they did surgery. It was a few, few days later, he was back to himself. Um, and so why do I tell you that story? I tell you that story because we have people that um, find themselves having situations come up that they don't even expect to come up in their lives. There's, there's, um, there's, um, there's emergencies and there's um, sudden situations that happen to all of us that we aren't counting on happening but they do happen. And so because of that, people are looking for, for people like us to come around them to have a word of encouragement for them. So I'm saying the same thing I know, but the, but the point I'm trying to make is we don't get to pick what the situation is going to be that we're going to have to speak to. We just have to be ready to speak to. Amen. There's people that are hurting. There's people that need us. There's people that are in situations that they didn't even count on. But they're in it just the same. How many of y'all know whether I, I hit my finger with a hammer or somebody else hits my finger with a hammer, it hurts just the same? <laughs> it hurts. And so because it hurts, I have to be ready to, to, um, to give attention to that. Doesn't matter who did it. It's just about helping that person get past the pain. Amen? So today is a good day. Today is a day that we need to uh, stay mindful, stay ready, stay on alert, stay on the lookout for what God has in store for you. God is going to lead you to somebody. God is going to lead somebody to you. 
And you need to be ready for that. You need to be ready. I want to tell you three things that God wants to carve out in you. Got that? See what I did there? Carve out. What do we, what do we, what do we carve out Thanksgiving? Thanks. See? You weren't ready. Three things. First thing God wants us to, to do is to praise him more. You might already be doing it, but you need to make up in your mind that you're going to praise God more. Because when we praise him and we give him thanks, that sets us up to be blessed. Amen? Amen. I'll say it again. If we praise him and we give him thanks, that sets us up to be blessed. And how many of y'all want to be blessed? Amen. Oh, no, nobody wants to be blessed. Amen. How many of y'all want to be blessed? If you want to be blessed, that's great. But how many of y'all know God wants you to be blessed so that you can be a blessing? Amen. 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 God wants you to be blessed so that you can be a blessing. Amen. So, so the blessings that he puts in your hand, he doesn't want you just to have them for you. He wants them to have, he wants you to have them for you and somebody else. Sometimes they might not even be for you. Sometimes the, God may put something in your hand for you to pass it on to somebody else. So we just need to be conscious that God is blessing us. And when he is blessing us, be looking. Be ready to pass that on. Praise and thanksgiving. More in the coming new year. Amen? Amen. Number two, seek his blessings. Then pass them on. Seek the blessings that God has for you and then pass them on to other people too. Three, seek out his presence that's at work in your surroundings. How many of you know God is close to you? Yes. If we know he's close to us, then we also need, need to know that he is close and he's around where we are. And so because he's around where we are, we don't have to be worried about being alone. I hear a lot of people talking about being alone these days. I feel alone. I'm so alone. I'm alone. I'm alone. You're not alone. God is with you everywhere you go. At the end of Matthew chapter 28, it says, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the ends of the earth. We're not alone. God is up to something. God is around us and he's doing his thing and he's just waiting for you to get in step with what he's doing. Amen? Amen. So in the coming new year, those are the three things. Praising him more, seeking his blessings and then passing them on and then seek out his presence at work in your surroundings. Those three things are three things that God wants us to do more of in the coming year. So I hope you write them down. I hope you will let them stick in your mind. And I hope that you will also bear in mind that God is wanting to use us. And all we need to do is put our, make ourselves available for him to do that. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you.